Okay, you're on. In part B of number 7, in an argon diagram, the loci, the argument Z minus 2i equals to pi over 6. I've written that here. And uh, mod Z minus 3 equals mod Z minus 3i. Also written here. They're given the loci and they intersect at the point P. So read the question carefully. You're asked to express the complex number uh, represented by P in the form R e to the power i theta, uh, giving the exact value of theta and the value of R to three significant figures. Okay, this problem involves uh, loci, or um, we would have learned quite a few things when we studied uh, the locus of complex numbers. So let's start slowly. Yeah? To help us with the problem, first you need to rewrite this. Okay, let's rewrite it. Argument, okay, z minus, okay, zero plus two i equals to pi over six. That's the first thing. Okay, be careful about this, yeah, because this is a complex constant, yeah, zero plus two i. And then we have uh, z minus three plus zero i equals z minus zero plus three i. Now we are good to go. Okay, I've just uh, rewritten the loci that they have given to us. Okay, uh, just a quick note. Yeah, we are dealing with this locus is singular. Okay, and uh, loci is plural. Yeah, so two locuses become two loci. So don't get too worried about it. Uh, again, they have given us the loci and they are saying that uh, they intersect at a point P. So, there are a few things we need to catch on really quickly. Okay, First, let's deal with the loci, or rather the locus, represented by this point. Yeah? We have Z minus O plus 2I equals to pi O6. So, what's the locus here? Let's draw that. This will be a a half line, okay, a half line, and that half line will start at this point zero two, okay. So this is your imaginary axis, and this is your real axis. So let's go ahead and place our complex constant first, which is zero plus two i. So we will have. Let's just do a little bit of labeling here, okay. This is two, and let's draw the line in, okay. And this angle here is pi over 6. Now, that you need to know. Okay? If you are given the argument uh, z minus, let's say, some complex number equals to a certain angle, then you should know that uh, it is represented by a half. Yeah? This is a half line. Uh, it starts at this point 0 to i. Okay? Now, and also please indicate this angle which is pi over 6. Now before we go on any further, we are going to use this idea. So let me write it down. Yeah? Okay. The gradient of a line okay, in coordinate geometry is given by the tangent okay, the tangent of the angle the line makes with the positive x-axis. Again, the gradient of any line yeah, is equal to the tangent of the angle the line makes with the positive x-axis. So, which means, okay, if you have an angle here theta, so the gradient of this line will be m equals to tangent theta. We're going to use this idea. So. I put it on the board, yeah. Okay, so if I give you a line and I tell you that it makes an angle theta with the x-axis, the gradient of this line is tangent theta. So, which means, while we're on this subject, okay, uh, take note. If I were to extend this line, I'm going to erase this in a minute. Okay, if I were to extend this line, this angle will be pi over six corresponding angles. 
So the gradient of this line will be tangent of pi over 6. I'm going to erase this, so just take note of these things that are very important. The gradient will be tangent of pi over 6, which will be 1 over square root 3. Okay? So we know the gradient, we know the intercept, we can write the equation of this straight line. Okay? We're going to use this in the next part, so I thought I'll say it straight away. Yeah? So the equation of this line will be y equals to 1 over square root 3x plus 2. Okay? Again, first we need to know the, uh, the locus uh, represented by uh, this expression here. So z is a point that is moving such that the argument of z minus this equals to pi over 6. So we can represent it on an argon diagram using a half line and it starts at this point uh, 0, 2. Okay, and also I told you that we can write the equation of this line by looking at this angle and I've done it here for you. Okay, so uh, very quickly we are looking at pi over 6. Pi over 6 we have 1, 2 and square root 3 from our trigonometry. Okay, great. Now that we're done with this, we need to worry about, okay, let me erase this, okay, we have to worry about the second locus, yeah? the point moves such that the mod z minus something equals to mod z minus something else. So, the locus here, very quickly, yeah? the locus here will be the perpendicular bisector, okay, perpendicular bisector of the line, okay, again, the locus here will be the perpendicular bisector of the line joining the point 3003. This is a fact that you have learned in class, yeah, we are looking at representing this point and this point on an argon diagram. So let's go ahead and indicate 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? And 0, 3 will be here. So if we join this line, or rather if we join these two points, we get a line. And we're interested in the, the perpendicular bisector. Okay? So the perpendicular bisector will be. This will be the perpendicular. So let me just draw that in, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that will be the locus of this point Z that moves in such a way that mod of this equals to mod of this. So this is the locus, yeah. This perpendicular bisector of this line. So what is the equation of that line? So let's start slowly. Let's label these points P and Q. Okay. So we know. The gradient of PQ will be uh, negative 3 over 3 will be negative 1. Okay? So that's easy because we have these two points. If you have a problem seeing this, just do uh, y2 minus y1 okay? over x2 minus x1 and you'll get negative 1. So the midpoint, let's call this M. So the midpoint, I don't think we should call this P, let's call this R. Yeah? You know why? This point here in the question is P, so let's call that R, okay? Let's call this the gradient of QR. So, gradient of QR is negative 1, so M is the midpoint that you can easily find. Uh, X1 plus X2 divided by 2. Again, X1 plus X2 divided by 2, Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. And because we're dealing with the perpendicular line to this QR, we know that we are going to use M1, M2 equals to negative 1. Therefore, the gradient of the perpendicular bisector will be equals to 1. Okay? We are looking at this, the gradient of QR. Therefore, the gradient of the perpendicular bisector will be just 1. So, since we have the gradient here, it passes through this point, 1.5, 1.5. You can easily use y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1 and find the grade, excuse me, and find the equation of this line. Okay? So this line, the equation will be y equals to x. You can do that on your own. Very simple. Yeah? y minus 1.5 equals to x minus, excuse me, okay? x minus 1.5 and you clean that up 
uh, you will get y equals to x. So now we are almost done. We have got two lines. We have got the equations. I'm going to erase this. Yeah, I don't need all this. So let's start slowly. Okay. Now the question says that p can be written as. Please follow very carefully. Yeah, p can be written as r e to the power i theta. So what is theta? So let's label this. This is theta. Okay. We are looking at this line y equals to x therefore this theta must be equals to pi over 4 okay the gradient here is 1 yeah the gradient is 1 so like we talked about here the gradient of a line is the tangent of the angle uh, the line makes it the positive x axis so uh, since the gradient is 1 tangent theta equals to 1 therefore theta equals to pi over 4 so not difficult then we have to find uh, R, yeah. R will be the length of OP. Okay, R will be the length of. Let's write it here. R is the length of OP. Now, how do we find OP? Let's go ahead and solve these two equations. Okay, so we have settled uh, theta. Let's go ahead and find the coordinates of P. So I have y equals to x, and I have y equals to 1 over root 3x plus 2. Solving simultaneously, I can have x equals to 1 over square root 3x plus 2. Okay, so I have x, 1 minus 1 over root 3 equals to 2, and you can solve for x. When you do that, uh, you will get, uh, you will get x equals to 4.732. Do that using a calculator. Yeah, four point seven three two. Okay, so the coordinates of P four point seven three two four point seven three two. So now we can easily find. Now we can easily find the length OP using Pythagoras theorem. So R, which will be OP, will be the square root of four point seven three two squared plus four point seven three two squared. And when you work this out, you will get 6 point, 6 point, let me write that again, okay, you will get 6.69 and we are done.